Okay, welcome to this being a sport management and sport development student webinar. Um, hopefully uh, this will answer a lot of the different questions that you've got, mainly about student life and being a student on these particular courses. Um, and at the end, we will also come to different contact details, different social channels that you can use should you have any questions that come up from this. Um, I'm going to get our two lovely students to introduce themselves in a second, but I will come to um, Harry first. Do you want to introduce yourself and just say what course you're on? Hi guys, name's Harry Porter and I am on the Sport Development course. And then Lauren. Hello, I'm Lauren. I'm on Sport Business and Management course. Brilliant, thanks guys. So plan is to slowly go through a different series of questions, as I said, mainly focused on student life, mainly focused on kind of being a student on those courses and the, the kind of uh, peripherals of that sort of that sort of thing. Um, if you do have any very specific questions that you want to ask about sport management, sport development, and they're a bit more course related, we will give you some contact details at the end that you can contact people with. And we also have different points throughout the presentation where there are some website addresses as well that you might want to log on to and ask. So first things first, the two courses that we're talking about today are sport management and sport development. Um, you may have logged on to this, uh, this uh, course from another sport area, but um, there are lots of other webinars that you can watch related to those areas as well. And should you want to find out or any information about other sports courses or the, the kind of general institute of sport, you can log on to the website, which is there. And that's chai ac.uk forward slash courses you can use that to find out more information so we'll get started straight away with the questions and get into the main parts of this so starting right at the beginning might be a bit of a way back for you guys might be a little bit of a you might have to think a little bit but what steps did you take before joining university lauren i'm going to come to you first with that question yeah that's fine yeah so it was obviously three years ago and um, in fact it was four years ago because i took a gap year um so i'm really trying to think back but basically just had a little look on what universities did my course i had a look at the modules um that they offered and just saw how they were assessed those modules so i personally don't like exams um i'm sure no one likes exams but um a lot of the modules uh were assessed by exams at other unis which really wouldn't suit me so um when Chai said they don't use that many exams, I was like, that's perfect for me. And the modules looked really good. Um, my course was a BA as well, so it's not a BSc, so I'm not like sciencey minded. So BA was much better for me. Um, so yeah, just looking at the modules and what the course is, and obviously looking at the actual uni as well. I went to an open day um, and absolutely loved it. I just thought it was such a good uni. It's a small university. Um, and I think deciding on what uni I wanted to go to was a hard decision but actually I think Thai came out on top purely because it's a small community and that everyone knows everyone and the lecturers know you by a name not number um, and the actual town of Chichester is just lovely so yeah I did quite a lot of research and I definitely found the right uni. Brilliant thanks Lauren. So Harry one of the other questions there is that how what were your initial thoughts or your feelings about going to university? When I first learned about me being able to go to university with the courses offered I was I was a bit anxious a bit nervous that I would be able to perform and provide the results based on the course content but by the time by the time I got in I was within a month I felt relaxed I felt that thanks to the help from the sports lecturers that everyone was always helpful they always gave me good advice so it was a quick transition from being a bit nervous to feeling feeling relaxed about going to university. Brilliant, thanks Harry, that's really cool. So I'll, I'll stick with you Harry, so the, the last question there, so what's your top tip when deciding on universities? What would you give as your top tip? I'd say consider looking at all, looking at all the course details that you are interested in, not just on specific, on a few universities, but all the ones that offer that course as well. You never know what you may be uh, may provide that uh, um, may prefer. You may prefer exams rather than assessments. Some others may not. So always good to read through every single detail about the courses that you're interested in. Brilliant, thanks, Harry. And Lauren, same question to you. Then, is there a top tip you'd give when uh, when deciding and researching? Yeah, I think it's like just how would you envision like you being at uni so would you rather have like a massive hall of people 
um, and you're spoken to by one lecturer and they don't really know you or would you rather have like a personal relationship with the lecturers and they know you by name and they're really helpful so it's like and then also like the nightlife as well like would you rather be out every night in a big city with loads of choices where to go or would you rather like have a few choices and you know people in the clubs and stuff so it's like how do you see your uni experience um, I definitely saw the second option so having like a smaller community feel um not having like loads of options for nightlife but just enough um and also getting to know your lecturers really well like I quite like I really like the fact that we have like a good relationship with our lecturers and we can just go and speak to them and they know who you are and how they help so yeah just seeing what do you think you want out of university and how do you feel going to university brilliant thank you some great tips there brilliant thank you so moving on then to uh, those top tips, and this is a bit from me really. So um, you've probably done some of these things already, but you have got opportunity before you before you eventually uh, arrive at your your chosen university to to really kind of cement and concrete that you are definitely choosing the right place. So do still um, visit open days. The, they will be coming up for the summer term and you will get the opportunity to visit. Um, do, if you can and you haven't already, still take part in campus tours and there may still be things going on like taster sessions and applicant days. So you still have time to do all of those different things just to make sure that that final decision is the right decision for you. Do visit the local area. Um, just remember that, um, I suppose, as Lauren said, are there all the things that you want? Is there enough nightlife? That sort of thing. But also you're going to be living in that area for potentially up to three years, sometimes even more if you choose to stay around or study further. So it needs to be an area that you can live in comfortably and that you've got enough to do in. If you are commuting, maybe test run that journey from home. Um, sounds like an odd one, but you don't want that added stress of having to get in a car and sit in traffic. Make sure you give yourself enough time. Know those kind of crucial points where potentially you're going to hit traffic as well. And something that's really important is always ask questions. You are never going to be the only person in the room with that question in your head. So do ask. You might be the first to ask it, but there will be lots of other people in the room who will probably breathe a sigh of relief that you've asked it. So, yeah, always ask questions. We're always willing to, to answer anything you throw at us. So moving on then. So start to think about when you actually got to university for you guys. So getting started, um, Harry, I'll come to you first with this one. So um, what was your first week at university like? My first week involved me going around the campus area, getting to know where I would be regularly commuting to for my lectures, but also finding out what societies are provided at the different areas of university. So it was it was a lot of a lot of getting to know the area, but it was also getting to work, getting to improve my social social life, just uh, getting to know the people that you are going to be sharing that area with as well so it was a social social week for me brilliant thank you and um, lauren how did you find settling into student life yeah um i really enjoyed becoming a student again after taking a year out um, of education i really enjoyed it i think university is just so different to whatever you've done before so college or school etc um, it gives you so much more freedom um obviously like learning to cook was a good one um so lots of student books cookbooks that are easy meals quick five minute dinners cheap meals as well so that was really fun just to learn with your flatmates how to cook stuff um and i think yeah it's just kind of like making sure that you are being really social that week so <clears throat> trying to get out and see who's around and um, who's in your halls trying to make friends i think that's my like top tip and when you settle in like try and yeah just be keep yourself busy like don't and then it stops you thinking oh I'm really miss home etc try and um be sociable and join all the clubs that you want you're looking to join and go out etc but also making sure that you like know how to do the basic stuff like cook and um, wash up and and you're washing etc so your mum's not there anymore so um yeah <laughs> it's just making sure that you know you try you really do put yourself out there and you 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 know you enjoy your freedom a bit and your independence because it is so 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 different from living at home brilliant thank you i'm going to stick with you for the last question so rather than now what does a tip what did a typical week look like for you in year one so the first oh, first ever week i think we had lots of um like tours around the campus so showing you which rooms you were in and um, the campus seems like big when you first start I remember thinking I'm never going to find H3 or whatever um, but actually like 
it's just so easy to get around like it takes a bit of time so don't panic if you don't know where you're going there's always people to ask as well people are so friendly um just stop someone and ask where the room is and obviously you've got sis as well in the library that can tell you so i think yeah we were getting used to our rooms um we were going out quite a bit to be fair um and that's what I'd say, just make sure you try and go out. The SU uh, are really good. They put on like phone parties and paint parties, etc. cetera. Um, and I'd say definitely try and get to those. Um, try and speak <clears throat> to people on similar courses to you and obviously your same and your course mates as well, because you'll be spending quite a lot of time with them. Um, and yeah, just like enjoying the freedom and making sure you go and do food shop and etc. So yeah, it's just, it's a really nice way to like join uni. So it's not like hardcore in your first week um and all the lecturers know how you feel and they're aware that you might be a bit anxious and they don't throw a ton of work at you the first week they like really gradually introduce things so it's not actually that scary when you first start it's just getting that first day done um and yeah that's all I'd say it's good so typically in your first year how many hours do you reckon you were in lectures Ooh, um, off the top of your head you don't need to be too specific probably about 12 hours it sounds a lot but it's, cool. it's not you have a lot of time to do what you want to do outside of uni I'd say about 12. Fab and coming to you Harry how many hours in you're in your third year now aren't you so <laughs> how many hours do you reckon you are, are in now? I'd say I'd say around 12 years no 12 years 12 hours as well based on days that I'm working but yes again as Lauren was saying got plenty of free time to just do what you're interested in around that whole area so 12 hours for me but plenty of time for work and social life brilliant you've brilliant. answered my, that's answered my final question so do you have time to fit a job alongside studying and you've, you've obviously alluded to that as well which is really good so thank you uh, moving on to our next slide then. So something that um, we uh, do each year is we start a Facebook group for our undergraduate applicants um, and um, a lot of people join that and we also then ask some kind of different surveys and bits and pieces about what people's concerns are and the reason we do that is so that we can offer the right support and also lecturers and support staff across the university can also have an idea on the sorts of things people are coming with worries and niggles about so that we can make sure that they're fully equipped to kind of allay those fears and bits and pieces. But I'm going to come to to um, Harry first, what, what do you think was one of your biggest concerns before you came to university? For me, it was probably going to be able to adapt to the different assessment or examination style for the different modules. But again, with the core, with my sport development course, there are very few. There's I've only got one exam in my time being at Chichester University, which is which has been very useful. It's been it's been big stress release from this. I've been able to just focus on the essays. So the lecturers have helped me with adapting to the different academic style, academic style and assessing. So that was my main concern, but the lecturers have helped me a lot with that. Excellent. Thanks, Harry. Uh, Lauren, how about you? What were, what were your biggest or what was your biggest concern on joining university? I think, um, yeah, similar to Harry in terms of, yeah, the like exams or essays that we are given to do are different to school um there's definitely help out there your lecturers help you there's people in the library that can help you so it is adapting and making sure you don't set yourself like really high expectation for your grade your first year because you've got to give yourself time to understand uh what the lecturers are looking for and how you write in an academic way um, so it does take time. I think also like moving away from home, I'm quite far away from my house. So my parents house. So it's like I was a little bit nervous. The fact when they dropped me off that first day, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, like they're going back three hours up north and like I can't get home. Like, I've, you know, I don't have a car or anything. Um, so I think that's like quite nerve wracking. But nowadays with like technology and stuff, like I used to FaceTime my parents all the time and um, it's a lot easier now you've got technology to to contact them. Um, so, yeah, moving away from home was quite scary, uh, especially as the fact that, yeah, like I said, you've got to be independent. No one's going to put dinner in front of you and you've got to do it yourself. So, yeah, it's just getting into a routine, I think, which is different to what you've done before. So, yeah, finding your feet in the first week definitely helps you to do that um, and yeah just socializing with people and trying to make friends with people um, and it takes your mind off like anxious like anxiety and stuff so yeah 
is that's probably my biggest concerns about moving away and the exams and assessments. Thanks, Lauren. That's great. Um, I think you've yeah, touched on all of those points, which is really good. So um, it shows that you're still here. You've survived those first few years and you're, you're obviously soon to be uh, soon to be completing and graduating. So that's brilliant. Um, next next question then is, is, is kind of similar to those is talking about that, that moving away from home, um, potentially living in halls, those sorts of things. Um, with all three of those questions in mind, I'll come to you, Lauren, first. Did you, how did you find that moving away from home? Um, and how did you feel about making new friends? Did you live in halls? See if you can cover all three of those points. Yeah, so I lived in Chilgrove um, Halls, which is on campus. I think um, either camp either halls, whether you go to Stockbridge or Fishbourne or even on campus, I think you do build up a community. Um, we made like a group chat um, in our halls like the first week we joined um, and tried to just try and add people as they were like walking in the building and be like oh you on our Facebook chat and then that actually was really helpful so we had like you know we went around to the people's upstairs flat and had like a few drinks and just chilled out and stuff so it's like yeah definitely living in student accommodation was really helpful to meet people um, and the student accommodation is really nice as well so it's quite helpful um, how do I meet new friends meeting people yeah so like I've, like I've said before like just trying to get out there put your name out there put your face out there don't kind of shy away um because your first few weeks are like the most crucial weeks of making friends and knowing people on your course and you can obviously see who who you like and who, who you might want to do some like group work with when you do come to like group work assessment projects etc um and yeah just just keeping busy just making sure that because you do have plenty of time on your hands as well when you're not in lectures so either you're doing work maybe with your housemate and um, we used to do that all the time in first year we'd just sit in the kitchen and we'd all come in and do some work but like it was still like a social time so you're trying to get to know them um so it is scary but like once you've taken that first step like you just feel so much better and yeah the first few weeks are tough but it's it's about building like a social social relationship with lots of people and you, you will feel better. Brilliant. Thanks, Lauren. I think that echoes really as well what I said before. There's also the applicant groups, which are a really good way of finding not only course mates, flatmates, all sorts. I've had other other versions of these webinars where people have spoken about um, joining up to Facebook groups, then creating their own groups, then creating their own WhatsApp groups. I had an international student who said he landed, turned up at university a week later than everyone else, but felt like he knew everyone and they were waving to him from windows and things like that. So they, they, these groups are, are set up with that in mind and with you guys in mind as to obviously helping you. Um, Harry, I'm going to come to you because I know that you've obviously you haven't had the the conventional one, two, three years. You you've jumped straight in and joined us at the third year. How did you find that move to to a university in third year? Yeah, I felt that it was a it was a big jump for me because just going into the final year, you're being assessed on absolutely everything with your content. But be, um, I was offered accommodation halls, and that's where I current, currently am right now. But and that has made a big help, played a big role with improving my social life because I, there's the guarantee that you're going to be spending a lot of time around 10, 12 people, depending on how big your accommodation is. So that will help. Um, also, I'm on campus as well, so that has also helped that. I'm not that far away and there's loads of people all around me that I can engage socially with and the lecturers are not that far away. I just get help from everyone that is very close as well. So that's been a big help for my transition to from from my previous course going into the final year. Brilliant. Thanks, Harry. Um, Lauren, back to you just for one final thing. But how does or, or how did the process of finding a second, third year house work for you? Um, so we waited we took the uni's advice and waited for the uni student housing fair um i definitely wait for that try not to get houses before before that fair um because obviously the people who attend those houses the landlords who attend those houses are uni accredited so if you have any issues the uni will back you up basically um so it was about september when we obviously started and about december i was thinking oh i really hope we've got 
a house and then they were like no just wait just wait and I was thinking it's getting later and later but actually we found a house really easily at the housing fair there was so many landlords and on that day of the fair we just made sure we weren't really doing anything we went to the fair and the whole afternoon we spent walking around Chichester just finding these houses that they were on to offer and had a look um I think you do have to be like fairly quick you can't be too laid back about things because obviously the houses do get snapped up um so yeah if you find a house you like and it suits your budget then I'd try and put a deposit down as soon as possible um third year was a little bit more difficult because well because we've got six of us for next year who's staying uh, sorry for this year and there's six of us so six beds are quite difficult to find so we did find one um which actually is a great location and price etc so we put a deposit down pretty much as soon as we've seen it um but I wouldn't worry if it's getting like after maybe March April time like you still do have there still will be houses and the uni are really supportive and uh, we liaise with the housing um lady on campus and we spoke to her uh, she does all the private housing and she's been really helpful um I'm staying for a fourth year for next year so I'm trying to find a house for four of us for next year um and we only found one about a month ago so everyone was stressing saying oh they've got one and some people were like we haven't got one and we found one but we have to be quite on it um especially yeah trying to be on a fourth year because you've got so many more students below you on like other years trying to find houses as well so yeah I'd say it's it's a relatively easy process there definitely will be a house for you it's just trying to be on the ball and making sure that you you know you're aware of it but please go through the uni housing fair like I can't stress that enough I've got friends who didn't and they've had major problems with their landlords um, and the house itself and the uni obviously can't do much about that if they're not accredited to us so yeah don't panic you will find a house Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, just to reiterate that as well, that support is there. That support is in place through our accommodation team. And as Lauren said, using houses that are accredited will potentially save you a lot of lot of trouble, a lot of heartache, and um, and, and you'll get that backing and support from the university because we do ensure that they're houses that are fit for purpose and, and those sorts of things. So yeah, there's always support available. So Moving on to something that we've touched on already is that coping with exams and essays and you've both spoken about your support networks, you've spoken about the lecturers and you've spoken about the academics, but um, I'll get you briefly, uh, each of you, just to talk about the sorts of assessments you've done um, potentially this year. Maybe Lauren, you could talk about the first year as well briefly, but um, Harry, I'll come to you first and I'll just say, so what sort of um, assessments have you done this year in your subject and, and kind of maybe how many and how often? I've had I've had mostly essays with my modules. They're looking at between two thousand. The shortest one is one thousand, but the average that I've got has been between two thousand and two thousand five hundred. I've had you get some modules that require you to re complete recordings, complete programs, complete entries. So whatever your course looks at, there you'll have to sort of see what style of examination they do. Um, how I prepared for these assessments, it was always a case of start like start like a planning phase as to what you need to what you need to add on in terms of information, what you need to acquire, in terms of resources, what you're going to have to actually do for that assignment. But also don't stress out with getting as much work done as soon as possible. Plan out little stages for that work. Uh, I would have some of my some of my modules require two assignments. Some are just one big main assignment throughout the whole time working on that module. But um, I'd say my biggest one has been my dissertation for my final year. But again, as been saying before, there's loads of help from all the lecturers that you will work with. And there's also there's all just all the other staff as well around the whole campus that will be able to help you with all your assignments. Brilliant, thanks, Harry. Lauren, over to you. Can you give us a bit of an idea on on what was what it was like in the first year for you guys? So assessments and and kind of how you prepared and how often they were. Yeah, of course. So um, first year, I think I had like a couple of essays. Um, like I said earlier, they're different to how you write in school um but the lecturers do like really teach you how to reference like, other people's work you do like a little bit of reading to see if your um 
if what you're saying is backed up by someone else. Um, so they teach you how to do that. So you're not thrown in the dark at all with that. Um, apart from essays, I think we had like a presentation, um, but that's normally in front of your class. So it's not like masses of people. Um, but and that's actually quite fun because it's normally like a group presentation. So it's not just you talking. Um, we had one module where we had to basically have a, like a like a like a report, I guess. Um, it was a business module. Uh, in first year where we had to make our own sports product that wasn't on the market um so that was actually i absolutely loved that module um we were in a group for that so you did a group report so you obviously like allocated sections of the report out to your group members so it wasn't just all of like your writing um and then did a presentation about your um object that you'd created this sporting object um so yeah they've all different types of assessment so if you're not great at exams like there's definitely essays you can do it's not all exam based i have been i would say lucky but i think actually it's pretty normal i've only ever had one exam um at uni obviously due to covid i wasn't here for second year so um we weren't on campus so we couldn't have our exam so it'd been cancelled but overall I think I would have had two if COVID wasn't a thing um so actually you think of having exams all the time but that's over three years I had two well, I would have had two exams um and the exam I did have our lecturer prepped us really really well um obviously they can't tell you the questions but you just read over like the topic like they're really helpful um and it wasn't scary it wasn't in a massive exam it was just in one of your lecture rooms that you sat in before so it wasn't scary at all um, I think just being like conscious that first year obviously doesn't count to your degree, but you have to pass it to get into your second year. So being conscious that first year, yes, you want to make friends, you want to go out, um, you want to, you know, have a bit of freedom, etc. But making sure you do still work hard because you need to pass that year to get into year two. Um, but there's so much support, like if you're feeling a little bit behind, you know, we've got this open door policy at our uni where you can just go and see your lecturers and knock on their office door um, and they'll literally speak to you for ages about your work. So, yeah, it's not scary at all. Like the essays, you get used to how you you're meant to write. And there's sometimes they share examples of old like work that you can have a look at and see their style of writing and, and you know what their grade they got they also share the marking criteria so it's not scary it's nothing new so you can have a look through there um they really prep you well for assessments i would say thanks lauren that's great um that leads us nicely actually to, to kind of the next bit which is kind of links off of exams essays pressure stress points those sorts of things um and I think it's something really important that all universities should highlight is the support that's on offer and these are the things that there are alongside um, as you said academics and lecturers have, have this open door policy you can go and see them you can book appointments you do the tutorials all those sorts of things but alongside that you've also got a whole wealth of, of, of support not only from those academic skills so there's workshops you can delve into to teach you how to use software to teach you how to structure essays to how to use excel word all those sorts of things so there's everything from the basics right the way through to, to the more formal academic skills we also have our chaplaincy so we do have our chaplaincy who will see people from any faith um, if you if you so wish to kind of join different sessions to do with that. We also have our disability and dyslexia service. So for those more specific uh, kind of categorised um, support needs, then we do have services for that. We have a student health service and that's um, kind of physical health and mental health. You can see there on the screen, we've got you in mind and we've also got you talk counselling. These are run as formal sessions. There's drop in sessions, all sorts of things. And then quite importantly, we also have student money so um, that that can be kind of another fear that people have is the support around money, budgeting, knowing when to kind of um, how many hours to work, all those sorts of things. There are people there to support you to help with all those sorts of things. Um, so that you uh, hopefully take some of the stress out of it. I'm not going to say it alleviates every bit of stress because I think you always will have those little things, but there's people there all the time and it's about, again, talking and asking those questions. So for you guys, placements are probably something that's a bit more unique uh, and probably involved in more in your subject areas. So um, Lauren, I come to you first. Have you been on any placements whilst you've been studying? Yeah, so second year I had a whole module called Work Placement. Um, so they set you up in terms of they helped you write a letter to a business that you were interested in working for um, and gaining experience for. Uh, they helped me with my LinkedIn profile. They really encourage you to have LinkedIn and it's, it's such a great tool in the business world. Um, 
they yeah they really help you to they set you up basically to find find a placement we have a lady on campus who can help you find placements and um, they do encourage you to try and find your own so if you've got any businesses that are local to you or family or whoever's involved in businesses and you want to work for them they really encourage that so my placement I um, came home I did it in the summer so you have that flexibility um, and I worked for a netball company so netball's my sport um, I was already umpiring and playing in their leagues uh, when I was home for summer um, and I just asked to speak basically to the director um, and spoke to him and he was like absolutely that's fine so I did 210 hours um, but that split across like the whole summer um, so I did like a couple of hours a week um, and I learn so much like I can't tell you like how valuable work placement is um, it was just such a great experience and the contacts that I made um, through that work placement was invaluable um, I did I ran their social media and their marketing which actually really helped me because I didn't know what I wanted to do uh, long term before uni um, I started on the sport development course that Harry was on and then realized I'm a bit more businessy minded so I wanted to go on to the business course um, which is what I did so the uni helped me transition over to that course which was just super easy um, so this placement helped me to know that I just love marketing um, so yeah I really enjoyed the placement I learned so much about social media about how to design a website like loads of stuff um, and then for the assessment of that it was a little bit about the director and he wrote to the union said um, a little bit about me and then um, what I've been doing etc and then I had to just write a report on what I'd learned and that report was hard to fit into the work out because I literally learned so much um, and then I did like a little bit of a placement after that so through the um, company that I work for um, I found another contact through my director uh, he works at the MK Dons uh, football club so that's my hometown Milton Keynes um, and I just said to him do you mind if I do a little bit of work placement here and he was like absolutely not that's absolutely fine like no problem at all so I actually went to the Dons and worked in their marketing team for um, a good I think it was about three weeks last summer um, absolutely loved it and then the person that I knew as my contact moved down to Portsmouth Football Club which is obviously near Chichester and then now I work for Portsmouth Football Club to do I actually work for them not just work experience um, doing their marketing so from that one placement at Totally Netball I've created so much of an opportunity and now I'm working at Portsmouth Football Club in their marketing department so they are so valuable like I absolutely love that module and yeah the contacts that I've made are brilliant so I definitely encourage you to do it um, and try and be like really you know shoot for like the top um, person that you need to speak to so try and get to like the directors and you know use your those, those contacts and um, just see if you can like shadow them and see what they want to do because it might help you in the future and it's definitely helped me because now I'm doing a um, master's next year in marketing at Chai Uni because I don't want to leave and mm -hmm. um, so from that placement yeah it's helped me to know my future career so I absolutely loved it and yeah totally encourage people to do it. Thanks Lauren. Um, Harry is there anything you want to add there about placements have you had the chance to do any? I have had the place I have the, the benefit of getting a placement and that was also it was from previous course before I came to Chichester University but it was also in a it was also a placement that was based around the career work that I was mainly interested in with the fitness industry and so I went to Spirit Health Club in Eastley and that gave me an insight as to the roles in everyday life of a, a, a fitness centre manager, one of the fitness staff, whatever they did. And it was a case of over, it was about 200 hours worth. And um, after that time, I continued going back there because I wanted to learn a bit more about everyone's roles in that, in that career, in that career. And um it's been a big help with helping me decide what I wanted to do and finding out the sport and um, finding out sport development was a course provided from Chichester was very beneficial because having spent my time at my work placement, we did a lot of promoting sports activities and sports classes for, from all the different staff. And it was a case of 
planning presentations, going lots of media posts, a bit of marketing as well. So I would definitely guarantee, definitely say, look for work placement. It doesn't matter how, if it's a short time or a very long time, as long as, long as you know you're going to enjoy, you're going to learn so much from it, it's definitely worth it. Brilliant, thanks Harry. So big up the work placements, which um, I think is is definitely, I think anyone from any subject area will, will veto and say exactly the same thing, that um, they're so useful and they give you a really taste, a real taste for where your subject area could take you, which is really important. Um, coming along to one of our, a couple of our final slides. So um, Harry, I'll come to you first with this one, but what would you say to someone considering studying sport development or sport management at Chichester? I'd say it's a it's a lot it's a lot of fun. There's it's not for, it's um it provides you with just a complete wide range of different concepts that actually would impact on sport in the world overall. There's so much to consider. You got you got people across the world. You got economy. You just got how it can benefit everything, and you learn a lot about. How, it event, how sport plays a massive part with the whole world itself. So we know that based on these mega sports events that we see, we see the World Cup, we see, we see all these football events that bring people together. We focus a lot about how sport brings people together in our sport development course. It's probably the same for sport management, but that's probably most of that, how we can maintain sport in different areas. But maybe Lauren will be able to help you out with deeper insights to the purpose of sport management course. So I'd say it's a lot of fun and it's very, very educational. It provides a lot of information. Thanks, Harry. Lauren, do you want to add in yours for, for sport management? What would you say to someone considering? Yeah, so I absolutely love this course. Like, it is so good. I mean, all the modules that we've learned are so relevant in everyday sport business, no matter what business it is. Um, yeah, not just sport, I suppose. Like we've learned about finance. It's about managing people. Um, we've oh, we've just learned so much that you can take into your future careers. Um, the current module that we're doing at the moment is our community engagement, and myself and Harry are in a in a group for that. Um, and we ran a netball tournament, a charity tournament. Uh, what was it last two weeks ago? Um, and we raised so much money for a mental health charity. But that that was one of our projects was to run an event. Um, and from doing that, we've learned about like Gantt charts and stuff that you like would use in a business. So um, I'm now running events at Portsmouth for um, part of our marketing, our marketing strategy. And um, I'm like using like Gantt charts, but I've never heard of them before. So you can so like relate everything that you're being taught you need to the outside world. Um, and I'd say just, yeah, making sure that, you know, look at the modules online. Um, our course, my course now is uh, accredited by SimSpar. So that's a massive thing. Um, so we're now accredited by a sporting organisation that, you know, deemed our course to be like really fit for purpose for the outside world. So that's huge. Um, not many universities have that. So, yeah, making sure that you look at the modules, just make sure you, you know, you like the sound of the modules, get some more information if you're thinking or, you know what's that what's that module about um yeah i just love the degree it's really really good and i suppose my degree and i suppose yours harry as well um we offer such broad ranging degrees so we have literally been taught like so much but when you leave like you've got so much knowledge of like everything to do with business and like you could almost go into any sector of business so finance or um managing a leisure center or manage yeah like there's so many like jobs you could go into um, or you could specialise so like I'm doing specialise in marketing so um, yeah it's been it's been really good I don't want to finish the three years and it's up very soon unfortunately um, but it, yeah it's been really really fun and I definitely recommend it to anyone who is a bit like me who wants a smaller uni um, who wants you know just it's just a great life a uni life is great at just stuff and yeah luckily mine's not over just quite yet so yeah really enjoy it 
Thanks, Lauren. So our final slide of questions, and this is a quite a nice one, not only for those of you listening, but also for me hearing from our students as well. So I'll come to both of you, but if you can do both questions at a time. So what's your favourite? What's been your favourite part of your course? And then what do you plan to do once you've graduated? So Harry, I'll come to you first. I think my favourite bit as for the course has actually just been sitting in sitting in the lecture rooms that we have all of our all of our lessons in and actually just engaging with everyone that is in that room with you i mean i've got very close with a specific with a lovely group of friends that very i'm getting close with lauren thanks to just constantly being in that area where i've just been able to engage socially with that after i graduate it is probably going to be looking into the career that i'm interested in and that is going to be working in the fitness industry so as saying about previous slides about the work placement it's very beneficial to get a work placement in the career you're interested in but it doesn't matter which one it is but i'd say just push for the career that you want to go into and um, take in as much from the courses that you're applying and it's going to be an absolute blast of a time thanks harry, thanks, harry. lauren over to you then for the two same questions uh favorite part of your course is hard um I just really enjoyed the content that we learned. Um, I didn't. I don't think there's one module that I really didn't like. Um, yeah, I enjoyed like the lectures that we had and the assessments, and yeah, I enjoyed. I just really enjoyed the learning, to be honest. Um, not everyone will tell you that, but yeah, I, I just <laughs> love the academic side. I think also um, not just course related, but just uni related. It's just meeting friends. Like I've met such a nice group of friends and I live with them now luckily and I will live with most of them next year because they're doing a fourth year too um so I think yeah you've made like we've made like friends for life in the last like three years and yeah university just brings everyone together um after I've graduated so obviously we graduate this year uh obviously I'm doing a master's next year in marketing before I came to uni I could never imagine being a master's student I think oh, that's too hard I would never be able to do it but I actually um did a little bit of work at the post-grad master's um where ceremony graduation um last year and I was thinking all oh, these you know they're really intelligent people and um I don't think I'd be able to do it and then I got home and had a look on our website and I was like oh my goodness marketing masters sounds really cool and then looked at the modules and was like absolutely going to apply for that and when I told my <laughs> parents they were like masters you're going to do a masters I was like yeah like why not like so yeah after I do my masters I'll probably move back home obviously for the for the finance reason um and maybe try and yeah get into a marketing team maybe at a football club like I have done before um now we've made like connections with other football clubs that obviously like the dons that i'd worked out and portsmouth so hopefully use those connections from work placement um and yeah use my degree and <clears throat> my master's degree wisely and hopefully go into marketing so yeah i'm really excited for the future and university's definitely helped me set me up for that career path because like i said i had no idea what i wanted to do until that work placement and i absolutely loved marketing so yeah Thank you both for those fantastic insights into your, your kind of higher education journey. It's been really interesting for me to listen and I hope that um, that's given our, our, our viewers um, interesting information as well that help them make that. Before we sign off, I've just got a couple of other slides to do. So we've got um, two different um, ways to contact us here. So we've got our Unibuddy chat platform which you can find on chai.ac.uk forward slash chat and that's your chance to talk to actual students and also some of our staff are on there as well so if you do want to ask some of those more um, probably on the ground questions those sorts of things then there are students on there who can answer them with a really honest opinion on their experiences of studying on those courses if you haven't already we've also got our facebook undergraduate group there as well which you can join you'll be asked a couple of questions just to check that you are one of our applicants but um, then you'll be able to join that and then you'll be able to start linking up with students from your course um, and as these guys have said you can start to then form whatsapp groups and and get to know people who might be in your accommodation and bits and pieces like that so that's two different different ways and then finally if you have any further questions then please do not hesitate to contact us um, as i said earlier you can go on the website to find out information and also some of our key contacts for the department are on those pages but you can also send any questions to either study here at chai.ac.uk 
or also if they're more course related you can send them to admissions at chai.ac.uk and we will also forward those on to the relevant people should they not be answered should they not be able to be answered by by the teams that get them so brings me around to the end of this and I just want to say a massive thank you to our two students who've been here today to answer questions um, and as if you'd like to forward any questions then please do thanks very much for listening and hopefully we'll see some of you in September <laughs>